But Frank Pierce is as well known to us all here as any man possibly can be, both as a personal friend and as a public benefactor. He was as kind to my father as any man in Yorkshire. He was as kind to me as any man in Yorkshire, and I think you all know of his many public kindnesses. So it is with great pleasure that I now ask him to open the Frank Pierce Memorial Wing. Frank Pierce. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think we really need to call him Mr. Chairman, do we? I mean, he's just James Hadley to us. Mm -hmm. And if his speech is to be believed, and I've always known him to be an honest man, then I think we all know each other well enough to dispense with the customary formalities and uh, get down to the serious drinking as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Melford 3121. Good afternoon, Mr. Colwell. Yes, sir. Yes, he has you down for 6.30, sir. Um, yes, of course, I'll tell him, sir. Yes. What? No, I'm sure it won't be, sir. Right. Goodbye, sir. Mr. Hadley not back yet, Sutton? Uh, no, miss. He said not until five. Oh. Uh, excuse me. Uh, no, thank you, miss. Nearly finished. Quite straightforward. That's Jennifer's father on the phone. Yes. He's going to be a little late picking Mr. Hadley up. Oh, where are they going? Um, oh, they're going to dinner. Chamber of Commerce, I think. Oh, God, poor James. Roast beef and Stilton in a room full of cigar smoke. Hmm, I wonder if they show blue movies after. Thank God that's over. I'm panting for a scotch. Mr. Mayor, Madam Mayoress, ladies and gentlemen, many times over the years it has been my pleasure to be able to say a few words on behalf of the voluntary committee. Of oh, the... L. Uh, the committee, as I'm sure you will know, has over the last two years worked unstintingly towards the realisation of... Hello, Sutton. Goodness, what a job you are enterprising. Remind me to ask you to come and do mine sometime. Have you seen Miss Joanna? Hello, Helen. Ah, oh, darling, uh, you're not ready. Ready? Ready for what? Well, I thought we'd agreed last night. Thomas's. Aren't you coming with me? Is that what we agreed? Well, it's going to be awfully lonely going on my own. I was relying on you. I mean, still, if you're doing something else... Excuse me, please, Lady Helen. I'm not doing anything at all. Well, it'll only be for a couple of hours. Um, Sutton. Lady. I wonder... Some tea, my lady? Oh, yes, Sutton. That'd be lovely. Uh, right away, my lady. Helen, we never agreed anything of the sort, and you know it. The great advantage of being an interfering old bore is that everyone knows what to expect of one. Oh, come off it, Helen. You'll never be old. Well, at least you appear to be receiving me, as they say. Charlie Caldwell's coming, and you want me out of the house when he arrives. I'm so glad you're the sort of girl one doesn't have to spell things out to. Now, do go and change, or we'll be late, after we've had a cup of tea. You know... I was quite looking forward to meeting Charlie. Joanna, you know as well as I do the state of James's marriage. They've decided to spend three months apart. That's all I know. Well, that should tell you quite a lot about the state of any marriage. Oh, Charlie Corwell's a nice enough man. <laughs> In fact, I'm very fond of him. But he's hardly what you'd call the sophisticated type. Now, don't you think it would be better to avoid advertising just at this particular moment, the fact that James has an attractive young woman living in the house with him. Oh, then why don't we tell him the truth, Helen? That I'm staying here just until my fiancé arranges his divorce in Washington. I mean, that should take his mind off dark suspicion. Oh, yes, darling, of course you're right. I'm just being silly and old-fashioned. But to tell you the truth, 
I was hoping I could talk you into coming with me. I'd so love your company on the drive. Oh. Well, if you put it like that, the Thomases. But I just want you to know, Helen, I wouldn't do it for anybody else. You're very kind. Thank you, darling. Can I ask you something? Anything except my age. <laughs> what do you think of me and Bill? Well, I haven't really met him, have I? No. But the idea. Women marrying men 20 years older than themselves. Well, I think it's a very shrewd idea. In the first place, they're likely to be far better off. And in the second, much easier to manage. Now come along, darling, or we'll be late. Right. Ah, oh, Sutton, tea. Oh, how lovely. Oh. Thank you. And thank you for giving us your time. Goodbye, Mrs. Good luck. Good luck. Very nice, I thought, James. Everything Goodbye. went off very well. Uh, yes. It's well, in the management room, Frank. Right, well, why aren't we? Or James, uh, before we get involved again, I've got a proposition for you. We won't discuss it now. I'll phone you later, eh? Thank you, James. So, a proposition from Frank Pierce. Well, nothing definite. He just wants a meeting. Well, it's none of my business, but I'd watch my step if I were you. Oh, with Frank Pierce? Mm. What are you talking about, Charlie? Something I should know? Not specifically. Just keep your wits about you. Charlie, what exactly are you driving at? I'm not driving at anything. Well, that's hardly what it sounds like to me. All right. Just don't be taken in by that big smiling mug of his. Big-hearted Frank. Oh, I know he's not mean with his money, but that's the only side of him you've seen. He's not only bought himself a title, as Sir Frank, but he's bought himself into the good opinion of a lot of people who he's not above using to his own advantage when the chance arises. Well, we'll just have to see how it turns out, won't we? That's right. That's all I'm saying. Cigar? Good God, no. Not before dinner, thank you. You've, uh, talked to Jennifer again? Uh, no. Not, uh, not recently. I may be in New York myself in a while, if I see her. Any message? No. No message, Charlie. Well, I'm not sure I understand the situation any more than you do. There are none of the traditional complications, not on my side, and at least I don't think on hers. A bit of the other, you mean? That sort of thing, yes. We just seem to have an endless capacity for giving each other hell, that's all. I reckon you both need your blooming heads banging together. Yes, well, that's just rather too subtle an approach for me, Charlie. Besides, I don't think it'd work. Morning, Jeffrey. Oh, hello, James. Sit yourself down. Good journey? Well, much as usual. Except for a slightly thick head, I had a night out with my father-in-law. Oh, oh, Charlie, how is he? Well, he's unfashionable as ever, in that he's actually making more money than he's losing. A goodly Macawberish principle. From which I deduce you're in the mood for talking business. Well, that's what we're here for, isn't it? I suppose you didn't discuss your financial situation with Charlie Caldwell? Look, Geoffrey, my marriage is on the rocks. At least it's drifting Magic towards him at a pretty good speed. Now, please, let's not talk about that. We've got enough problems on our plate. All I'm saying is it's hardly the time to go to my father-in-law and say, Charlie, I'm broke. Got any ideas for making a fast buck? Rather more than a buck, I'm afraid. You've been over it again, have you? I wish the news were better. But uh, whichever way we look at it... I'm bankrupt. And that's about the long and the short of it, yes. There are some chances that we may be able to minimise the damage. You mean I might still be able to afford a motorbike? My dear James, as you know, I, I feel largely responsible for the position you're in. If you hadn't listened to my advice over well, the chairs... Well, Jeffrey, you... please, let's not go over that again. All I'm interested in is the situation we're confronted with and what we can do about it. See for yourself. But if you can't raise a million pounds within the year, I can't even guarantee a pushback. I'm sorry, but you'll just have to accept it. Until three weeks ago, I was Sir Geoffrey Osborne's personal assistant. That meant that I had access to a lot of confidential information. Now, that information stays confidential, including anything that I may know about James Hadley. All I can say, or all I will say, is that he may well be the right man for you. That's good enough for me. 
I'm very grateful to you. That's the worst of it. That's the cloud. But let's not despair altogether of a silver lining. You mean start doing the pools? I mean, you're still a director of this bank. And oh. we're still in business. Are you, are you sure you won't? Absolutely, no, thank you. Our shares may have fallen from 340 to 85 in a matter of months. But that doesn't make us different from anybody else. It means our venture capital is cut back. We're holding on to cash again, like everybody else. And you're holding on to my estate as security for mine. I'm sorry, James, but uh, there's a limit to the time we can stave off foreclosure. Morning. Letter from Bill? Yes. He's due back soon, isn't he? Mm hmm. Oh, dear. Yes, well, I think I shall leave that till after breakfast. Have you eaten? You're up early. Yes. No, I mean, I'm not very hungry. Do you feel like a cup of coffee? James? Mm hmm? He's coming back to London with his wife and family. They've taken a house in Hampstead near the Heath. He's what? Well, that'll be nice for the children, the Heath. No, it's all right, James, honestly. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, dear, I'm sorry. Thanks. I'll read it. No, that's your letter. Is it definite? Mm. He went over to tell her that he wanted a divorce. So last she saw the light. Mm. Now they're all coming back together. Cozy, isn't it? <sighs> it's all right. I can't really blame him. Children, everything. Well, I, I suppose it is understandable. Hmm? Mm. No, it's all right, James. Just let me get used to the idea. There it is. I think this should do for you. Nice of them to put a show on. To Bill Allard. Dear Bill, having completed various inquiries, I am now more than ever convinced that our best channel of approach is through James Adley. I've known uh, James Adley for many years, and we've now established a relationship of complete mutual trust. Furthermore, I do not think the benefits to himself will have escaped his notice. Yours, etc. Um, address it, Councillor Allard, Town Hall. No, um, second thoughts. Send it to his home address, it's in the book. And remind me to phone Adley later on, will you? You know you can stay here, don't you? I mean, you can stay here just as long as you like. I can't, though, can I? Why not? Well, you know why not. It wouldn't work. What wouldn't work? You and me living together in the same house. Let's see what you're getting at. You're very kind, James, and I am grateful. Well, there you are, then. That's, that's all right. It would just be creating problems we could both do without, you especially at the moment. But what are you talking about, Jo? You and Jennifer. Jennifer? Now, what on earth has Jennifer got to do with it? Oh, James, don't pretend to be so innocent. Look, let's at least talk about it. We've already had one dose of a busted marriage this morning. Well, almost. 
So let's at least face the other so we can get drunk at lunchtime with a clear conscience. Now, supposing you and Jennifer do decide to get a divorce and I'm living here in the house, well, I mean, it's not going to look very good, is it? <laughs> Be practical. Think about it. Joe, for heaven's sake, you are my goddaughter. Now, if I want you to stay in my house, that is nobody's business but ours. Not in theory. Not really. anyway. Now, listen, I... I am not, not getting a divorce. I still want my marriage to work. Now, would you just bear that in mind? I'm sorry. No, it's... it's... It's all right, it's not. I know you're just trying to be considerate, but look, let's just concentrate on your problem, shall we? I mean, you've... Well, I think you've had a nasty shock. I just don't want you to make any decisions till you've had time to think about it, that's all. Look, what is this? Was it Helen the other day when Charlie Caldwell was coming round? I might have known it. She was only being tactful. Yes, well, I can talk to her. No, James, please. She didn't want him to misunderstand. I gather he's quite good at that. Well, only when he wants to be. Yes, well, anyway, things aren't the same now, are they? I mean, well, when I was waiting for Bill, that was one thing. Now I've got to think of something to do. Do you want to make yourself useful? It's against my religion. We've got a lot of paperwork here. I, uh, I need a secretary. No, I do, honestly. I mean, if you don't help me out, I'm just going to have to go to an agency. Can you type? Can I type? Can the Pope roller skate? I beg your pardon. I mean, I can type, but I need a little practice. Well, that's perfect. I can't spell, though. Then I shall buy you a very, very beautiful dictionary. Oh, James. It's all right. It's all right. You've got the job. Do you want to start now? Mm. Well, don't say I'm in till you find out who it is, right? Go on. Um, Melford 312 and Mr. Hadley's secretary speaking. Mm. Who is it calling, please? One moment, I'll find out if he's in. Are you into Sir Frank Pierce? Yes, of course I am. Hello, Frank. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think that's a very good idea. When do you suggest? Ye uh, diary. Tomorrow? Well, what time? Six o'clock, yes? Six o'clock would be fine, Frank. All right, I shall see you then. No, I shall look forward to it. All right, thank you. Bye. Well done. You did that rather well. Now, Miss Roberts. Yes, Mr Hadley. Take a letter. Right away, Mr Hadley. Well, give it me and I'll borrow Sutton's bike. <laughs> Anthurium Adrianum. And you won't find many of these in West Yorkshire. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. You don't have to. Just try growing one. Well, let's have that drink, shall we? You know, this place gets more like Kew Gardens every time I see it. <laughs> well, I like growing things around me, James. It's, it's growing things has never changed, and we live in times of change. Oh, I, I'm not complaining about that. It's, Change means opportunity. And opportunity is where chaps like you and I come in. Are we talking business now, Frank? Getting towards it, James. <laughs> Getting towards it. Yes, I've had a long run. There are plenty of chaps of my age who'd be thinking about retirement. Somewhere where you could grow these sort of things out of doors. But uh, not me, though. I'm fit as a fiddle. Ready to start all over again. <laughs> not from scratch, mind. Onwards and upwards, yes. It's times like these when men with nerve enough to take the risk can pick up all the plums. You know, I always thought you were far too shrewd to take risks, Frank. Oh, I prefer a certainty, if I can find one. <laughs> and that's what I think I've got, with your merchant bank behind me. Go on. 
You've heard of Barrowdale? Yes. You mean the new town? Will be in about five years, but now's the time, James. It's near the sea, space enough for a big marina. That means land reclamation, roads, real estate. I've plans drawn up, but then so have other people. I'm not the only one who knows a good thing when he sees it. Yes. It's a big job, James, but not too big for me. And I can get it with your help. Ambitious, this friend of yours, isn't he? Frank Pierce? Well, I don't think he'd quarrel with that description. The company that gets in on this development first is going to be a very lucky one. Why does he want us to come in with him? Because he thinks that with our name behind him, the name of this bank, he's got a better chance of doing just that, getting in first. There'll be a lot of competition. The area is one of the few with any real growth potential in the country. Industrial development, housing... Well, I don't think that we can afford to miss out on a promising venture like that any more than anybody else. We'll be putting our name to a relatively unknown quantity, at least as far as I'm concerned. Tell me, James, how well do you know Pierce yourself? Well, I've never done business with him, but I have a high regard for him. Well, certainly his track record's impressive enough. Mind you, I can't pretend there isn't a personal interest here. I mean, if we do go in with him and it turns out, as he says, well, our shares are going to come up off the bottom, aren't they? I mean, they're going to rocket. They're going to rocket to the moon. We're still not going to see the kind of money inside 12 months, which is what you need. Yeah, but I might be able to buy myself some time, Geoffrey. We'll look into it uh, very carefully. I promise you that. I think he's sound. I mean, I've known him for a very long time. As I say, I've... Well, my relations with him have always been on the receiving end of his benevolence, like this hospital wing I was telling you about. But in that area, he has always been absolutely impeccable. But I've never done business with him. I've no reason to feel anxious. you in three words lay bloody off and I'm saying that as a friend. You're still giving me nothing more than a tissue of gossip and rumour that wouldn't stand up under scrutiny for two minutes. Where's your proof? Ah. You don't even know what Frank Pierce's scheme is. Suppose you tell me then. I am not at liberty to discuss it as you very well know. Yes well as a matter of fact I know a good deal more about it than you think. What are you driving at Johnny? Are you trying to scare me off advising the bank to support him? Look I'll say this once more and once only. Pierce is a crook. And sooner or later, he's going to be shown to be a crook, like a few others in the last year or so. And when he goes down, I don't want to see him dragging you with him. That's my interest as far as you're concerned. If you could give me one scintilla of evidence, I might Look, believe By the time the evidence is available and staring you in the face, it'll probably have half the fraud squad alongside it also staring you in the face. That's all I'm trying to avoid. Oh, thank you, Jerry. Thanks for thinking of the family name. It's my family name to remember. At least for the time being. And you say that this evidence exists, do you? Believe me, when I have it in my hands, you'll be the first to see it. When you have it? It's lucky for you they are my hands. What are you getting at, Charlie? Are you warning me that Frank Pierce is in trouble, or are you making it your business to see that he is? I'm just giving you some good advice. I'd have thought your reputation in the city and in Yorkshire was worth more to you than any money you can expect from a deal like this. Unless you're a damn sight more gullible than I suspected. What a damn sight shorter of money than anyone suspected. Or maybe you've just been listening to your friend Baker a bit too much. Baker? Now what's Baker got to do with it? Well, since his abrupt departure from your bank, he's been Frank Pierce's right-hand man. You didn't know that? Oh, well then. It seems I've opened your eyes an inch or two after all. And on that satisfactory note, I'll leave you to your reflections. I've got an appointment to keep. Goodbye, James. And thank you for lunch.
James, you were quick. It's barely 20 minutes since you telephoned. Uh, what can I offer you? Uh, coffee? Tea? Garlic store? You should see her. Huh? Uh, a drink? Maybe. No, thank you. I've just had lunch. Oh. Well, you make yourself comfortable. I've finished dressing. I'm sorry to have been... There's something out there. No, no. Just traffic. You, uh, you want to pick my brains, you said? Yes, uh, sir. I'm scared. Well, whatever you can find. No, thank you. You didn't tell me you were working for Frank Pierce. Didn't I? Oh, yes. Uh, it uh, pays the rent while I look around for something. Well, what exactly are you doing for him? I'm headhunting. Arranging introductions, coming up with names of people that might be useful to him in this new development. Including me. Mm. We talked about you and the bank. Well, for obvious reasons, I'm not the best man to approach the bank right now. You seem the natural choice. Also because of your connections in the North. Is that all? Mm -hmm. That's all. What else did you imagine? I don't know. It's just that when I find that things that might quite naturally come out don't come out, there's usually a reason for it. No one was hiding anything from you, James. What's the matter? Are you getting paranoid or something? No. How well do you know Frank Pierce? Well, not as well as you do, obviously. Well, I wonder if I do. Look, James, what is all this? If there's something you want to know about Pierce, why don't Look, you go my ask... My neck is on this. Now, if I'm going to involve my bank, I want to know what I'm doing. What are you trying to say? Do you suspect him of something? James, if, if there's anything you know... I don't know anything. I just want to make sure of what I believe. And what I believe is he's all right. I'm very glad to hear. Did you discuss my financial position? What has it what has your personal financial position got to do with all well, this? Well, it could have a great deal. Oh, I see. Going on the theory that a man in need of money won't be too particular what he has to do to get it. Well, you said it first, Greg, didn't you? Well, you're forgetting two things, aren't you? One, I'm not at liberty to disclose confidential information obtained while working at the bank, and I did not do so. Whether you believe that or not, it's up to you. Personally, I didn't give a damn. But two, it's some weeks since I left the bank. A lot of things could have changed in that time, including your luck. So, wouldn't have been any good his asking anyway. And did he ask? Yes, he asked. A, because he's a nosy old sod, and B, because like everyone else in the market, you must have taken a pasting recently. He asked out of interest, as a friend, and he learnt nothing. All right, James, does that satisfy you? They were watching me and they had a camera. Well, that's what I want you to find out. Look, Robert, you're a solicitor. You've handled divorces. Well, I know it's unlikely, but it is not impossible that they're working for my wife. No, 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 there's nothing settled, but you know the situation. Yes. What? No. No, it was clean. It was a perfectly ordinary business call. Yes, well, would you just check them out? All right, have you got the number? Yes. All right, I'll be here. Robert, I thought you were going to telephone. I was, but I thought I'd better see you personally about this. 
Well, have you dug something out? Yes, I have. At least the agency I use for this sort of thing has. It was simple enough. Yes, well. James, why would the press be interested in you? The press? I'm sorry, Mr. Hadley, but I really can't discuss it. But you don't deny that two of your reporters in a car belonging to this newspaper were following me? The two men you saw are working on a story. What story? Mr. Hadley, that's as far as I'm prepared to go. All right. Very well, we'll see what legal steps can be taken. Intrusion of privacy, for one thing. People are getting rather sensitive about that. There's been no intrusion, Mr. Hadley. Well, I'd like to know what you do call it. The investigation is in progress. Of oh, me? Are you prepared to confirm or deny that I have been the subject of an investigation? You are not the subject of it, Mr. Hadley. Oh, thank you very much. Now, are you prepared to tell me who is? Sorry. Or how I came to be involved? As it happens, I don't know that. Well, you edit the paper. Yes, and I'm not writing the story. They must have been watching someone in the building. And why photograph you if they didn't think you were connected with that person? Baker, it has to be. We've no proof. When I see smoke, I'm inclined to believe there's a fire. The chain is there. The bank, you, Baker, Pierce. I'm sorry, James, but we can't touch Pierce or his scheme while there's anything like this hanging over him. Oh, Geoffrey, I understand your caution, We cannot but... afford to have the bank's name involved. I appreciate your frankness, James. I want you to know that. The banks are cautious animals. Where the Lord needs proof of a suspicion, a bank needs proof it's unfounded. It's as simple as that. And uh, you? I'm not a bank. I didn't know about the Chronicle. Always assuming you're right, of course, and, and it is me thereafter. Still, I can't say I'm surprised, not really. Well, would you mind enlightening me? Oh, well, you've got to admit, James, the next best thing to proving your case against a man is to start a nice, juicy rumour. Oh, it's been very cleverly handled, I'll say that. All right, then let's assume that's what's been happening. What exactly are you accused of? Backhanders to planning committees? Holidays in the sun for half the county councillors in the north. Well, it's the sort of story the Chronicle likes, isn't it? And it's come up just at the right time to put a spoke in every bloody wheel I've got going now. You've noticed that, I take it, James. You've noticed the coincidence. Frank, get on to your lawyers. Oh, don't worry. I will. But the arm's done. I can kiss goodbye to every ambitious development scheme while this thing's hanging fire. Now, look, nobody knows about this Chronicle thing except you, me and Geoffrey Osborne. Now, you may have got cold feet, but... He's not going to shout it from the rooftops, is he? Oh, the arm's done. By the time it's all over and explained away... Oh, well, we shall just have to wait and see who... Uh, ...picks up the contracts I was after, eh? That might explain a lot of things by the left. I'd love to know who my competitors are. Still, you'd have to have friends in Whitehall to dig that sort of information out, wouldn't you? Oh, come off it, Strapper. I know the classification of those things as well as you do. Well, I, I was once in the department. No. No, Strapper, I can promise you it won't go any further. Well, Pierce did hint I might check it out for him, but I didn't take him up on it. This is purely for my own satisfaction. Yes? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do have a theory. Name of Caldwell. Yes, good old Charlie. Right. All right, Strapper. I'll expect your call. Them there. What do you want all this lot for anyway? You lost something. Yeah, I'm just working out a graph of rising prices. See how much more it's going to cost me to run this estate this year than it did last year. Oh. Not thinking of selling, are you? No. What made you think of that? Just wondered. I hope not. Hello. 
Ah, hello, Strapper. Yes? You have, Anne? I see. Well, that is very interesting. No, thank you, Strapper. That's all I wanted to know. What? Oh, I don't know. I might buy you a small gin next time I'm in London. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. All right, one to you. Bye. Thank you, Strapper. Strapper, he was your old ex-civil service chief, wasn't he? Strapper? Yes, he was, as a matter of fact. Now, what on earth made you think of him? Well, just now on the phone. I'm sorry, I'm not quite following you. Well, that phone call. What phone call? Oh, I see. Yes, no phone call, right? <laughs> what are you doing? Charlie, I think we've known each other long enough now to be frank, open, and sometimes, I mean, just sometimes, even honest with each other. So you won't mind my saying that to the fact of being a two-faced hypocrite, you have now added the distinction of being a damn fool. Dear me, James, what an excitable fellow you can you be You come sometimes. to me, you say, Frank Pierce is a crook. You offer no evidence, just your own personal opinion. Well, that's all right, as long as you come to me, because I'm only a son-in-law. I mean, it's all in the family, isn't it? But when you go blabbing your mouth off to a national newspaper, sending them off on a wild goose chase... So just hang on a minute, James. Just hold it right there a minute. I haven't been near any newspaper. Whatever they've got on Frank Pierce, they've got quite independently of me. Mind you, all part of them. I'm delighted to see the press fulfilling their role as, as watchdogs of the public integrity. I'll raise two cheers for that any day you like. Are you levelling with me, Charlie? Am I levelling? Me, your own father. Oh, for oh. God's sake. I sometimes think I wouldn't know the difference. Oh, uh, James, instead of ranting and raving at me, you might give me some credit for having been right to warn you when I did. You chose to ignore me till you started hearing suspicions from other sources, but I won't hold that against you. So... All this press interest in Pierce, I mean, it's got no nothing to do with your need to get him out of the way. Leave yourself with a clear field. You're beginning to get the picture. Well, it's a bit of a coincidence, yes, isn't it, Yes, nice can turn out pleasant sometimes, isn't it? But there's still no proof, is there? I mean, neither you nor the Chronicle, nobody oh, offers oh, any the proof. Oh, the Chronicle, now, right. Now, you come round here. I promised, I promised that you'd be the first to see. I don't know how far your friends at the Chronicle have gotten. If they, if they don't dig in some of the places listed there, they'll get nowhere. And if they do, they'll find enough skeletons to fill a cemetery. That's my own research, James. Well, not entirely my own. I've got a couple of people working for me who used to be Pierce's men till they get sick of the way he was doing things. Well, not so much sick, perhaps, as just plain scared. Payoffs and backhanders all the way. More back scratching than you'd see in a monkey house. Sooner or later, it had to blow up, and they didn't want to be sitting on top when it did. Who are these men? Oh, I don't think that's important to you. They're very happy with their new jobs. They're, they're better paid. Quite a bit better. Look, I poured you a brandy if you wanted. I still find it difficult to believe. Yes, he's been jolly clever about it. That much I must say for him. Covered his tracks better than anyone yet. Anyone who's been caught, that is. But it's, it comes to the same thing in the end. The same tired old word, corruption. So what are you going to do with this? Well, I just see that it gets into the right hands. But the immediate question is your, your own position. Well, you're, you're not involved with Pierce in any way. You, you've signed nothing, I take it. No. No name on letter headings, that sort of thing. Not mentioned in prospectuses. No, nothing. I mean, we, we, we never got beyond talking. Well, you'll probably be all right then. Got out in time. Thanks to those with your, with your interests at heart. Well, we'd better keep this under lock and key. We, we don't want it getting into the wrong hands, do we? No sense in running unnecessary risks. Another cup, James? Uh, no, thank you, Betty. 
He's usually back by now. It's all right, really. I only came on the off chance. I'd be sorry if he misses you. Have you heard from Jennifer recently? No, no, not recently. Oh, there you are, Frank. Whatever's kept you. James was afraid he was going to miss you. Sorry, love. I was held up. Well, I expect you two want to talk business, so I'll leave you. See you before you go. Dear. Yes, yes, I'm sure. Well, uh, I see she's been looking after you. Uh, yes, very well. Uh, would you care for a... No, no. I've just got something to say, and then I shall be going. Oh, well, uh, suit yourself. Uh, I took your advice, James. I've got a damn good lawyer onto them scavengers in Fleet Street. It won't kill the rumours, but it'll uh, make them damn careful about printing. Yes, well, I wouldn't be too sure of that. Oh, wouldn't you? You lied to me. You took me for a ride, like you did a lot of other people. Well, it's going to give me some small satisfaction to see you get what's coming to you. And if necessary, I'm going to see to it myself that you do. Is that all you came to say? Well, I'd rather say it to your face than any other way. <laughs> By hell. You're a straight up and downer, aren't you, James? A right son of the flaming nobility. Yes, well, I don't think this is going to get us any further. Uh, before you go, James, uh, if you're going to carry out that threat of yours, you'll be needing this, won't you? How the hell did you...? <clears throat> go on, take it. Through the shredder in my office after Charlie left it with me this afternoon. After he? Must have been while you were on your way over here. Uh, I was going to keep it as a little memento, but you're welcome if you fancy it. <laughs> By the left, James. I'm glad for your sake you were born rich. For Pete's sake, James, what's the point of going to the police, the press, or, or anybody else if Pierce is willing to back down and beat it without a the fight? The point is you're concealing a criminally indictable oh, offence. Give me strength. Apart from which your own action amounts to simple blackmail. God save us from moralists. There's nothing to choose between the pair of you. One, I've got the job and I'm keeping it. Two, I'll do it better than Pierce would. Three, I'll do it straighter. I might have to buy off my enemies now and then, but I've never yet had to buy my friends. Look, I'm sorry if I've mucked up your plans for making a bob or two, but if you want to come in on my operation... No, thank you very much. Look, you cannot sit on this. You said it yourself in your own words. This is bound to come out sooner or later. What about those two men oh, working for you? you won't track them down if that's what you're thinking. A lot of my men have worked for Pierce in the past, and, and vice versa, but that doesn't worry me. I've, I've nothing to hide. Now, look, James, the only reason I had for showing you that at all was to make certain that you were well out of the way before it hit the fan. If Pierce hadn't backed down, it'd have had to be knocked down by the police, the press, and, and every sanctimonious little parasite between here and, and Land's End. If that's what he wanted, he's welcome. Well, I stuck my neck out to, to keep you clear of it. And, uh, as it happened, you, you, you need never have known. And by jingo, if, if it would have spared me this, I wish I hadn't told you. I don't give a fourthly toss for your flaming principles. Or your vindictiveness. Which, which is it, James, eh? Doing the right thing or, or carving your pound of flesh because the fella took you in. Plausible character, isn't he? Well, I'm, I'm a practical man and that's the only morality that interests me. So don't, don't go trying to teach me to suck eggs at my age. James, I didn't know you were in tonight. Ah, oh, there, oh, Perry. Nice to see oh, you. Right here. Oh, do you know my guest, Tim Grant? Yes, yes, we have met. Hello. Good evening, Hadley. Oh, well, if you two know each other, I'll leave you to yourselves for a bit. I must phone my wife or I shall be in dire trouble. Will you excuse me, Tim? Yes, of course. I'll see you in a minute, mm. Surely. Well, shall we sit down? Hmm. You know, Hadley, you've landed me with two very disgruntled reporters on my hands. They seem to think you've robbed them of the Journalist of the Year award. Well, I have. Well, somebody tipped off a certain person we were interested in, leading to some very heavy legal guns being trained in our direction. And a few more, legal or otherwise, pointed in other people's, I fancy. No one connected with this particular person has been prepared to say another word, not since the day you left my office. Blind alleys all round. Well, fancy that now. There's one thing I'd like you to know. I meant what I said. We were never after you. Well, we were looked at. Well, nothing serious. Just a day or two, like a lot of other people. Yes, well, there's something I'd like you to know. 
My connection with this person, as you call him, is over. It never really got off the ground. Hmm. Yes, well, I'm not really surprised to hear that. You know, if you felt you could help us at all, or perhaps knew someone who might... Yes, I rather doubt that, Mr Grant. Why did old Frank pack it in? Was it finance? The bank turned him down? Well, they didn't exactly say yes. <laughs> Surely he could have gone elsewhere. All I hear is he suddenly chucked in his hand, thanks very much, send in your expenses. What are you going to do now? Oh, uh, well, we've had this scene before. Mm -hmm. New York, I think. There are a few things I want to look at. Say hello to Jennifer. Yes, maybe I will. I'll just give you her address. No, I already have it, actually. She sent me a postcard. <laughs> we have known each other almost 10 years. We're like brother and sister. Talking of Jennifer, I had a call from her father yesterday, old Charlie. Did I want an opportunity of going in with him, same basis as with Pierce? <laughs> Didn't think old Charlie even liked me. If he doesn't, that's quite a compliment. Maybe I shouldn't have turned him down, but he's going to be in New York for a couple of days while I'm there. Maybe I'll uh, run into him through Jennifer. You never know what might happen. Helen's waiting for me. I'd better go and see her. All right, I'll be coming soon. Hey, save us some sand, pig. Pig? Well, that's it, I'm afraid, Helen. Bankrupt in 12 months, unless. Dear me. I thought you should know better from me than anybody else. Thank you, darling. Of course, if the estate has to go, I shall make sure you still have the tenure of your cottage. Oh. That's the least I can do, isn't it? You mustn't worry about that. It won't be the same, though. Someone else up here. James, I still can't quite understand. How did it all happen? How did it happen? Well, I don't know. Greed and ambition. I suppose that's the simple answer. Really? I was tempted to become chairman of the bank. I bought a lot of shares and the deal went sour on me. That's all. You look surprised. Well, I am, brother. I don't mean any offence, but... how very enterprising of you. <laughs> There's still a chance that you'll make it all back. A chance, yes. How? Same way I lost it, I suppose. More greed, more ambition. I hope you're more successful this time. Well, I'll try, Helen, I'll try. I'm already learning fast. I think. Mm -hmm. 